What's up guys, it's Harry here. In this podcast, James and I share some stories, talk about the overall market, and give some tips on the current small cap market. So stick around, listen up, because you're not going to want to miss this one. What's going on guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Um, today it's just Harry and I. Um, we're going to be kind of talking a little bit about the large cap market uh, overall, uh, how markets and economy are moving. Um, and then we'll kind of touch on small caps and, and kind of what we're doing there and, and how the how things are shifting uh, in that area. So, I mean, I guess we can start off kind of talking about the overall markets and economy. So right now, as of like last week, um, you know, the Fed raised another three quarters of a point. Um, we got news yesterday that Meta is going to be laying off thousands of employees. Um, we don't really know the extent of how many employees, but definitely it said upwards of over a thousand. Yeah. Um, and Apple had kind of come out and said that the production in China was going to be really slow. They're saying that it's because of China's zero COVID policy, which I don't know if that's accurate. It could just be because of the economy and the actual like market. In it. Well, China's market. pretty, China's pretty fucked right now. Um, China's pretty, pretty crazy right now. Just with their, I mean, they, yeah. there was a lot of rumors that the zero COVID policy was going to come to an end. And I think it kind of shocked people um, that they announced that it wasn't. Um, yeah. And I think, I think right now, like the overall stock market, we've just been bouncing around. And I think, I almost uh, I've changed my my stance a lot on things recently where I think I think that potentially over the next couple months to years we just might be a stock market that kind of bounces around. It's almost like every day you wake up right and then bulls are like, "Oh, the bull market's starting again." And bears are like, "Nope, this is just a this is just a it's a bear it's a rally in a bear market and you know, it's going to go down." And I almost feel like realistically there's nothing coming down the pipeline that's going to change one way or another like i think people are slowly starting to recognize like we are in a recession i think that layoffs and stuff and slowing up production and pausing of hiring yeah is is really starting to wake people up to the fact that we are in a recession um but you know that doesn't mean that the market's going to continue down either it doesn't mean just because we're in a recession or even potentially a depression at the time that the market's going to continue to slide it yeah. could just mean that we're going to bounce around for a long time i mean if you look at the past um, like stock market history, like, you know, a lot of times, you know, markets bottom during a recession and then just kind of are stagnant, you know, I mean, we could be in this period of like 1970s where the market really was just not returning much, Yeah. Um, but it wasn't crashing every day either. It just, we, you know, we, we might just be there. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. What do you think about that? But I, I completely agree with that. To be honest, I just think there's so much um, uncertainty around just, literally everything you know um yeah uh like for instance just last week uh you had you had canada going out and only raising the interest rate by 0.5 yeah and so everyone thought oh the united states is gonna only raise by 0.52 they must be in it together they must be um you know the the united states and canada must be kind of like teaming up they're gonna only raise by 0.5 it's gonna be good so the market rallied on that and I think a lot of people were caught off guard by just the Fed was like, no, nah, 0.75, that's what we're raising yeah. to. And we've traded a lot lower since that FOMC meeting. So yeah, I think that's also something to kind of look at is that, you know, everyone is betting that they're going to save the market. Everyone is betting that they're not going to be as aggressive. Everyone's betting and... You know, even when you it's it's an interesting environment right now, because when you talk to people, I feel like there. Yes, there are a lot of people who are worried. But, you know, when you talk to my neighbor, like, uh, well, I guess like my old neighbor, when I used to live in my parents house, you know, she texted me the other night and she was like, hey, what do you think about the market? Uh, I'm going to retire soon. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And she's like, well, I'm just going to retire anyway because the market will go up again, you know? There's a lot of people making a lot of investment decisions right now based on the fact that, oh, the market will go up again. Oh, the market will go up again. So that kind of yeah. tells me that maybe we have a little bit lower to go just because of the fact that so many people just are unfazed by this. Like, yeah. it, when you talk to working people who are out there, uh, you know, not that we're not working people, but, you know, like yeah, real yeah. fucking working people. Working, yeah, working class people. You know, um, a lot of them just have kept their head down and um, are like, nah, like the market will go up again and it's fine. Don't worry about it. 
you yeah. know so that kind of tells me that maybe the opposite will happen you know um, i think so too i think and, we've been conditioned dude i think we've yeah. been conditioned to think like since 2009 like right after the financial crisis that I think that we're just conditioned to think that the market's always going to get saved. I think that we always think the Fed's going to step in and save, um, save the world from ending yeah. kind of thing in terms of the economy. But, but this time I feel like Jerome Powell does not want to go down in history as the only guy that lost to inflation. I don't think he wants to go down in history as the guy that could not fix the economy and fix the market. So I think he's going to crush everybody because he has to. I think he unfortunately has to basically wipe out a lot of wealth that was built over the last 15 years. I mean, I'm pretty sure, and don't don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure the stock market in the last, you know, 12, 13 years since the crisis has averaged like an average of like 15% returns or something ridiculous like that. And it's like, you yeah. think about that in terms of overall wealth and compounding, it's huge. So yeah. I think that he realizes that that we just got way too out of control with spending. We got way too out of control with money printing and, and everything. And and he's going to do it, you know. So anyone who's not close to retirement and stuff, like, of course, I'd be a little anxious. I, I talked to a lot of older folk who are like, at that point where in the next five to 10 years, they were looking to either stop working or even stop working sooner. And now they're like, wait a second, you know, we're so used to making this much money every year because the market's been so hot. We've been in the longest like secular bull run for, for as long as we've, we've been alive at least. And yeah. you know, now these people are going to enter a phase where maybe it's protection time, but when you're close to retirement and you want to live off your investments, that's when it gets hard, you know? Yeah. And I think people are soon going to realize that. I think, I think a lot of people who are relying on their uh, real estate as retirement are going to come into a hard point. You know, uh, my girlfriend and I actually this weekend and the last couple of weeks, we're looking at condos and houses in the area. And, you know, it just doing the simple math of it. Like there was a, a really nice condo we found and, you know, with the price of it, even putting down 20%, our mortgage would still be really big. Just be considering the interest. Now I'm not complaining because I did have plenty of time to lock in a low interest rate if I wanted just kind of at the point where we're looking now and it's it's crazy so like you know if those people like my parents for example if they were relying on not saying they are but if they were relying on their house sale for their retirement because the market is slow let's say you know now trying to sell a very expensive home to new buyers who are getting locked in at seven over seven percent interest yeah. rates and you're you know at i think the math of it is like if you buy a seven hundred thousand dollar home you put down twenty percent uh, your mortgage is still going to be like five grand or something like that, which like yeah. to an av average person is pretty, like pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um. So I think we're just, like I said, I think we're, we're going to enter this period of just like a lot of uncertainty and a lot of slowness, you know, and, and just anxiety in people. And as the economy gets worse and as people realize it, I mean, I notice it every day. I think all time frustrations are at an all time high with people. Um, stress yeah. is at an all time high with people. Lack of savings is at an all time low. Credit card debt is high. Um, midterms are coming up where I think that we're going to run into a lot of political issues um, yeah. with either side accepting uh, the outcome. I think yeah. in general, that's going to affect the economy and affect the market. And, you know, like I said, I don't know if that means the stock market will go down because I don't think the stock market is necessarily a hundred percent reflection of the economy, but I do think we're just going to be bouncing around for a while. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and maybe we're going to look back on this podcast and be like, wow, you guys are yeah. completely wrong. It went way lower. It went way higher, or whatever. I don't really see a cause for going higher, though. I I think Neither. I think we're pretty optimistic, saying that we see a sideways chop. You know, yeah. I think that that's the more optimistic stance right now. Yeah. Rather than people saying, "Oh, it's going to go lower. It's going to go lower." And you have to wonder what the agenda really is. You know, like I mean, if you're a Federal Reserve chair and you yeah. see housing prices go out of control in COVID. It's like, why didn't you hike then? And everyone was like, oh, well, it was COVID. It was COVID. But to me, like during COVID, and maybe this is just because I uh, I was working all the time. Like there are a lot of people complaining yeah. in Canada about the lockdowns. But fuck, I left my house whenever I want. Um, I went out whenever I fucking wanted yeah. to. You know, yes, the bars were closed for a while, but I could still pretty much function on my own. It wasn't... Yeah. For me, it wasn't that that fucking terrible of a time. I saw, I saw from my perspective, people going to work. I saw people getting stimulus checks that were still working their jobs at home. I saw uh, people spending an absolute crap ton of money, and it was just for me, like, you know, yes, we had a, a pandemic, but it wasn't the worst case scenario. You know, yeah. like. To me, the worst case scenario is fucking, you know, 50% of the population just gets wiped out, you know? Yeah, we're trying. From what man. I saw, 
Um, you know, we had, yes, we, we did have like the economy impacted a little bit, but I saw things ramping up. I saw sales yeah. booming for all those major companies. I saw people spending a lot of money. I saw, you know, people were at home. They were online shopping. They were doing this. They were doing that. People were drinking, partying, having a fun time. And they were still working and still getting paid. And so yeah. I, it was really hard for me to understand, like, like, is that what a pandemic's going to be? Everyone's just at home spending a fuck ton of money, getting yeah. stimulus checks from the government, you know? So, again, they could have yeah. hiked then. They didn't choose to. And now we're in this position now, and everyone's, like, all deer in the headlights. It's like, for a lot of us, we saw this coming. Like, we've been talking about this for a while. We saw that this was fucking coming. Now it's here, and people are still in denial. So we probably have a little bit lower to go. And um, I think they're just going to keep getting aggressive and aggressive and aggressive and aggressive, and they're just going to try and wipe everything out, like you said. Yeah. To 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 me, and this is to me, this is a fact. I don't, I don't, I know people who will probably disagree, but I think the economy will be impacted negatively way more. Not the stock market; the economy will be impacted way worse with the looming recession, if not depression, than it was during COVID. Now, people initially will say, yeah. "How can that be possible? We were closed." The reality was spending was at a crazy all time high during the pandemic. I spent money like crazy actually during that time. The, the you know I was I was always drinking, buying like nice bottles. I was I bought cars. Like I mean I was spending because I was also bored. Like yeah, restaurants and bars were slower. Some of them were closed, but that didn't mean spending stopped. Um, you know we were all partying yeah. more. If you look at like like we what do we we say like the stripper index right like money yeah. was going crazy like. Down in Miami, Miami, we saw how many videos of these NFT guys or like anyone just how many fucking videos do we see of people fucking popping bottles every single yeah, night dude, in Miami? Dom Perry, and and it was like when you look at it back then, I actually this is why I agree with the Fed like really being aggressive because that just goes to show like I think as a country we got saved too many times. We had too much money available going out at such – we had free money. I mean, you could buy yeah. a $2 million house and have a really cheap mortgage getting locked in at 2% or whatever. And with all the stimulus going on, I mean, I know people who had no business getting stimulus checks getting stimulus checks. Yeah. Um, you know, And when I, I remember – we talked about some previous podcasts. When stimulus checks went out, You know, if you went to the mall, you'd see lines out the door at Louis Vuitton of people who – and not – trying to judge people by like what they look like or anything but like you could just tell these people probably had no business spending thousands of dollars yeah. in Louis Vuitton um you know and it was it was just a we got to a period of time and I think in our country where uh like gaudiness and you know just overall just overspending got crazy I see more Teslas on the road than I ever have and that's I have a Tesla it's an expensive car to have and pay for it monthly and I know people who have them that should not have them and I think we just got ahead of ourselves as a country so I think by Powell kind of getting aggressive and like kind of crushing the market and the economy, it's going to have to happen because if he pivots too soon and if he gets, yeah. if he takes his foot off the gas, we're probably going to have the same issues in two to three years. We're probably yeah. going to have to reevaluate in two to three years, or at least now right. we're going to wipe out. We're going to really, I think, wake people uh, to get aggressive. Like we're going to wake people to fuck up. Like people who aren't working right now, people who are saying that, yeah, that working an hourly job at a uh, grocery store or at Dunkin's or at anything like that isn't worth it. I think those people are going to wake up and realize, wait a second, I need to actually work for a living to be able to afford my life and my lifestyle. Um, I can't just float by on the bare minimum anymore yeah. because that, that's just not what our country's made off of. Off of. It's not what the economy's made off of. Um, and I think if long term you want the economy in America to thrive, because uh, face it, American economy is the world economy. That's just how it is. I don't. Yeah. It's unfortunate other countries have to deal with how we spend and what we do and our dollar affects them but that's the reality so if you long term want success in your country and in ours we need to fix the economy here we need to fix the market and and get people back on track to realism you know free money doesn't exist countries have negative interest rates at point that doesn't exist it's not real yeah. you know 10 percent mortgages as crappy as it sounds you know maybe that has to happen so house prices come down so that average people can afford it and maybe they're tight for a little while but maybe people will start stop spending outside of their means and stop spending uh, with arrogance because that's what that's what's kind of needed right now yeah and i also think that uh you know we kind of have two things at play in a, that we've never really had before and uh one thing is social media you know i was watching this documentary last night um and this this guy had already made like a documentary on Netflix, but on 60 Minutes last night, they were talking about uh, 
uh, you know, they had that guy on, they were talking about social media and, you know, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of like CNN or like Anderson yeah. Cooper, or all that type of shit. But, you know, it was interesting to watch how they were just talking about how social media affects people. And I think during the pandemic, that was at an all time high. You know, we had people who um, were posting old traveling pictures, some were yeah. traveling overseas. You know, you got the Louis V bags, the Gucci, everyone's yeah. flexing, everyone's showing off. And then that kind of creates a FOMO, I think, for the lower class. Oh, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. And so you kind of have this battle of rich versus poor trying to kind of compete against each other. You know, the rich people who are buying the nice bags, the poor people who are trying to keep up. And it kind of created that toxic mess during COVID where you saw a lot of people who didn't really have the money go out and spend it on all that designer shit, you know? Like, even now... Still, I mean, and Rolex, like the prices are uh, starting to come down right now. But do you yeah. remember at the height, like how hard it was to get a wash or how hard it was to get yeah. anything? You know, Richard yeah. Mills were going 200K over asking price. You had Rolexes going, you know, 50% over asking price in some things. I remember Alex yeah. went on a trip. I forget where he was. I think it was in Florida. And he sent us a picture and he's like, boys, check this out. There was not a single fucking Rolex in that store. So what does that tell you? Like the 1% is the 1% for a reason. It's the 1% of people. So when you have Rolexes being sold out, it means that, okay, that has kind of trickled down lower. There are people who are, you know, and I'm not saying middle-class people can't afford a Rolex or can't afford this. It's just, I feel like, Maybe during COVID it was a good investment, but it's not necessarily the best investment no. now, um, you know, as prices are starting to come down. But to me, that's kind of what what I was seeing was just everyone was trying to be flexing on everyone. And it was kind of a toxic culture. And another thing I see is that I think people who have money got really fucking pissed off at what they saw. You know, if you look at the top, like, 0.0001% of America, the people who own the big corporations, the people who yeah. are working hard every day. Like if you're a billionaire in America, you are working very fucking hard. You know, I had yeah. this conversation with another friend of mine on my deck and uh, we were talking and he's also a trader. And he's like, I'd never want to bill though. Cause those guys work fucking hard. And yeah. I thought about it for a while and I was like, you know what? You're right. Like, look how hard Elon Musk works or the top 1%. And the reality is, is that those can, those people control the government. Those yeah. people control, they have the money to lobby U.S. Congress. They are very aggressive uh, when they want something done. And when they want something done, they go out and they fucking get it because they're billionaires, they're worth a bill, and they have the money. And I think you saw a lot of those upper 1% really pissed off in covid Seeing yeah. people go out with, uh, you know, buying a bunch of Teslas or doing this or doing that. Everyone's wearing a Rolex, you know. I think you had a lot of those people pissed off. And I think that's part of why the Fed's so aggressive right now. Because I think a lot of those people came together, lobbied the United States government, and were like, we're going to fucking crash this thing. And I that's just really how I kind of feel. I know it's kind of like a little bit of a tinfoil hat type of conspiracy. Yeah. But I think you did piss a lot of those ultra rich people off and that's that's where we're at right now we're gonna hike we're gonna hike we're gonna hike and they're gonna fucking crush you and they're gonna make sure that you go back to work and package your fucking food and do this and do that because that's where i think they're at they're pissed yeah you look at the small cap market right now there's not as many people trading you know if we had two million people trading before we only have 50k now so it's like you know, they they have successfully, I think, crushed a lot of those uh, stimulus, whatever people. But I don't think we're there yet, you know? Yeah, I think um, I think the reality is like America as a country is built off of uh, a lot of principle of like you come here, you work really hard and you get to live the American dream, which means, you know, you get to have a house, you get to have a car and be with your family and all that. And I think we just unfortunately got too far from it. And we let politics kind of uh, put a wedge in between what's right and what's wrong and how we live our lives. And people got way too crazy. People got way too overextended. You know, the stock market 
like we said, over the last 12, 13 years, returned an unreal amount of money, which was a lot of fake money, on, I would say, on paper. And a lot of people, you know, like as long as you're in the casino kind of thing, you know, the money's the money's real. But, you know, the second that things kind of come down, the money starts to go away. And you're like, wait a second, like I, I've been spending like I, I have all this extra money. And, and now that the market's getting hobbled and I really would have been greedy, it, it's going to affect people. Um, right. So I, th- I always think that the best thing and I always talk to my friends about this, but the best thing you can do is just like, you know, over, you know, what's a, I think a really a better flex than having a Rolex and stuff. Cause like there was a period during the pandemic where I have a friend who works, works for Rolex and um, he's still a distributor. And I asked him, I was like, could you get me something? And he was like, no, he's like, I have a list of 50 people that want a watch and most of them shouldn't be able to afford it. But I think they're, they, they're just bending over to get it because flex culture became huge. And, and I think the, a really a sexier flex and a cooler thing is having stability and security in your life. Um, having a yeah. life that you can afford and not being stressed all the time. Uh, you know, if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, but you have $300,000 worth of lifestyle, that doesn't make sense. And long-term yeah. you're going to be stressed. You're going to be unhappy. Um, and things are going to affect you more. You know, I've, I've tried to build a life for myself where politics don't affect it as much. Um, you know, whoever's in office, yeah, it's some years tax are higher, some years tax are lower, but they always get you one way or the other. Right. So it's just comes down to being secure and not stressing so hard about that stuff. And I think just everyone got too far. You know, the only reason you're really stressed right now, but the market and the economy is probably because a lot of people are overextended. They've spent too much money. Um, you know, whereas reality, we're in a position as younger investors, I guess, to, to really yeah. build wealth long term. Right. So, well, we're fucking is- lucky, bro. That Like yeah. I can sit here all day and complain about this, that, or the other thing I can sit here all day about spending $2 more for eggs or $4 yeah. more for milk or whatever. I mean, you're probably a bit luckier than me because you're American and I'm fucking Canadian and things are just expensive here. But, yeah. um, for the most part, yeah, like. When I say that you're luckier than me, it's just like, oh, I have to spend a couple more dollars at the grocery store, but we're not going to be wiped out by this, you know? There will be people who are wiped out by this, you know? Um, For the most part, I'm going to just keep cruising on by because in in COVID, I literally just put my head down and I worked. And when I lifted my head, um, uh, I moved into a new place, um, bought some shit, and uh now i'm just really chilling you know i didn't go too hard um and uh the only trip i really did go on which i should be traveling a little bit more um that's my own fault but just because my girlfriend's in her masters like we haven't really been able to yet Um, but you know I, i went out to utah i had fun um you know chilled with alex and val that was super fun and then put my head down and went back to work, you know? And yeah, the market was slow for a couple months. But in reality, it, you know, it affected my mental more than it affected my, you know, the income yeah. coming in, yep. you know? Like, uh, the income was slow too, just off the market. But it was more mentally that I was having problems than when you actually look at the PL, it really wasn't too, too yep. terrible, you know? I wasn't losing a shit ton of money. So I think that, yeah, we're we're talking in like a lucky position. I do feel bad for some of the people who um, like aren't really receiving the wake up call yet. Like I feel like the Fed is sounding the alarm and like we're still like a little bit early. And once this kind of catches up over a couple quarters, you know, I'm really interested to have, to see how this kind of plays out, you know? Yeah. Dude, I, what's that saying? I think it's Warren Buffett. He says, like, when times of economic hardship come, we find out who is, like, swimming with their pants down or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, f- I forget that quote, but it's, like, it's true. And I think the two people that are going to be revealed here in this coming, like, next years or so are going to be people who overspent, people who are way over leveraged and have uh, lived outside of their means. And then on the flip side, it's going to be, unfortunately, people who are not of economic means and aren't doing as well financially because – the reality is like during t- the gas is going to go up after the midterms. I'm almost, I'm a hundred percent positive of that. Um, and when gas goes up, you know what? Rich people are going to complain about it. They're going to say, Oh, it's costing me more money to fill my Mercedes AMG, you know, G wagon or whatever, but there's not, it's not going to stop them from driving anywhere. Nothing's yeah. going to stop them from taking their vacations, going away on, during the summer and all that stuff. An extra $200 a week's not going to change their lives, but the people it will affect are the people who are way overspending and the people yeah. who don't have the money. So we'll see. I mean, again, we can, we could, kind of banter about this all day but you know it's gonna it's gonna be telling and i don't think anything changes until we receive major news uh yeah. you know and and i still think this is just gonna be a multi-year thing and you know as far as small caps go right now it's like 
I think there, I think opportunities are there. I actually, I actually, in my opinion, find um, on the short side, I need a few more weeks to really like confirm this in myself, but I think the opportunities might be better because I feel like after I lag and after um, H U D I the other day, like I just think a lot of short sellers are, are almost scared. Um, and I think it wiped out a lot of them. And I think that a lot of moves are actually pretty clean right now. Yeah. Um, we, we still lack a little bit of range and I, I do hope, like we do start to get some range. Um, like I don't, I'm not going to short things that are up 20%. It's just, to me, it's not worth the mental capital, but I'm going to, you know, I, I do hope that we get some more. And um, I think opportunities are maybe around the corner. I do think for you and for longs, it's it's just tough right now because there's just no confident on the, confidence on the long side. Well, I mean, I, I did, I, you know, I've been starting to pick you, it up a little bit. Yeah. You find it's it been getting better. Day. Yeah. It's been getting better for me. Definitely yeah. last week I saw you know, we're starting to change in the right direction, I think. Yeah. Um, but, but but you take those opportunities. Like, you take those opportunities, and then, like, you know what? If you go through a slow week, then it's like, all right, whatever. I, yeah. hit, a, I hit a banger. You know, you're not going to press. You're not going to come into the market today after hitting a, a $3 a share home run on Friday and be like, I need to make $2 a share yeah. today, $3 a share today. Yeah, just, exactly. You know, you know that's, which is huge. Yeah, and maybe I will fucking uh, make a 2 $3 a <laughs> share day today, but – uh, you know, you just have to have your expectations in check. I'm not expecting that. Uh, you know, maybe I hope the kind of, uh, uh, you know, stuff can kind of set up for me, but, you know, we'll see it. And also, I, I just want to say one more thing about the large cap market, uh, just yeah. as we're kind of transitioning into small caps, is that also I read something the other day, like what happens if the companies cut all the dividends, right? They're like, hey, economic hardship is yeah, it's probably you know, coming. That that's coming, and I, I'll it'll be interested to see how people react from that because there are a lot yeah. of older people that are living off those dividends who have money, yeah. who are down on the air that are like, well, at least I have the dividends. And yeah. when they cut that, it's like, oh fuck! You have you have dividends, and you have corporate profits in excess, right? That's what that's what leads to companies being able to give dividends, raise dividends. Yeah. Um, and the reality is, when you start to see, I I think, in my opinion, the last domino that is holding strong is Apple. If we start to see weakness in Apple, then I think pe- there's going to be a huge change in like the market sentiment. But yeah, um, you know that's like Warren Buffett's biggest holding, right? Is Apple, and I think that's because of their dividend structure and yeah. and the stability. But dude, once you see a, a uh, like a little chink in the armor there, I, that's when it's going to start to get to get real with a lot of companies. I yeah, mean, I think so too. Yeah, dude, look and at, I think pull just pull up a daily of Meta. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. Bruh. Meta, Carvana, all um, of them. What are what's what's some of the rest of them? Netflix. Like Oh, there, I mean, uh, Netflix, Peloton, Amazon, Snap, you know. Dude, Peloton's almost a penny stock. And I know in Pen- Peloton is like the one of the, like as a product is something that only wealthy rich people can afford. And like, it's a very nice product, but they're trading at like $5 a share, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because you know? all the wealth, I mean, wealthy people were like, fuck, I'm cutting my subs. Yeah, and that's it. And now, you know what? Now they're back in the gyms. Like, I, that, it's just, I, I mean, was, someday we should do a podcast. We can talk about actual like companies and like what they do and like why we disagree or agree. But but I yeah. mean, it's it's crazy, man. It really is. So, you know, just like like you said, as we're kind of, I guess we're coming up on the time to wrap it up. But, you know, uh, unless there's something else to add. But, you know, just right now, it's just about managing expectations in yeah. small caps, day-to-day trading and in large cap returns. You know, you just, you know, the market's not always going to be in our favor. Um, you know, I'm talking to a lot of guys right now who are way better than me about expectations and trades to take and, you know, uh, situations to avoid and it's like you know just right now i'm like today's monday november 7th or whatever it is and i don't even know but it's like you know i monday's I'm really still happy. going out and popping a few bottles this week yeah, whatever. I, listen mondays haven't been my day for the market for a long time i've noticed that from my setup mondays just aren't that great right now and yeah. so i i'm pretty much off on mondays like I, i'll come i'll show up and if an opportunity that's like an a plus or i don't even believe in a plus anymore if I, an opportunity shows up that's worth it i'll take it but pretty much i'm i'm you know i'm just taking it day by day and, sure. and that's all we can do right now yeah exactly and that's what yeah. i've really been doing too is just you know i think a big thing for me as well though has been i always wait for the open now i yeah. never trade pre-market yeah if things go up things go down that's okay i'll manage the sentiment but i never trade uh pre-market anymore just because um i know for you like sometimes it's like getting a good fill you know, yeah. the open when the shit fades. But like for me, it's just like not really worth it anymore. Rather just preserve my capital to the open, chill, watch. Um, and I know like Alex doesn't really trade like short in the pre-market that often either. But like, I feel like it just really depends on the day. Sometimes you're going to have yep. shit fade 
pre-market. Sometimes you're going to have shit run pre-market. You know, you just really have to be able to kind of size up the day. And I think for the open, you know, that's helped me kind of tremendously to be able to say it helps me manage my expectations my expectations at the open as well because if we have a shit that's just ran from like two to five you know maybe i'm not going to be as aggressive on that stock and maybe i'll look yeah. for others you know but there's so many situations that i think like we've just been like trained and conditioned for and a big thing is just not being emotional so you can just be calm cool and collected you know at yeah. the open i think that that's very important for me yeah i just spent the whole weekend actually like going over charts and stuff because you know i had a pretty good week the first week of november um, for the current market environment, but I need to find ways to eliminate the cuts I'm taking because like the way my, my style works is like, I take multiple cuts, but on the way down, as long as the stock has range, like I'm it's, it's well worth it, but I want to be more in the, the mentality, especially during this market sentiment where like, I want more confirmation rather than just like anticipating yeah. bre breakdowns. Right. So, so it's just, I think there's always room to improve. And I think kind of like you said, it's just, you just can't be in a rush right now. You have to kind of wait for. Uh, the right opportunities to come up and just not be not be so in a yeah. hurry to get get involved because you know what if you miss you miss it sucks but it's like all right you know but i also don't want we don't want to take subpar setups and just cut away our our actual equity so yeah i mean unless there's anything else you really want to add i think that's pretty uh no i think that's pretty my good camera. <laughs> the camera <is, laughs> yeah james I'm, is just fucking dropping everything right uh, now. i'm just um oh man but, no i think that's yeah. pretty good so thanks everyone for, uh, yeah. for listening and we'll catch you for the next one. Yeah. Later guys.